Hey, we find ourselves back here on the east coast of the United States in Hampton, Virginia. And I lucked out and ran into, again, Two Hawks, one of the finest uh, native storytellers I have ever had the pleasure of acquainting with. Uh, uh, two Hawks, say go. Say go, it's gonna go on. Twent, let's get in there. Yeah, one of the uh, stories that I was telling Big House about is uh, for Eastern Woodland people here, the Iroquois. Um, and we're in Hampton, Virginia, uh, close to uh, about a half an hour away from Virginia Beach. And uh, we're part of the lower four Iroquois down here. And, um, you know, we get many stories about uh, what's happened in Virginia with the racial reclassifications of native people here. And often I hear of how many people say that, you know, their particular family group kind of hid in plain sight and they were just hidden. And for most of the native communities here, um, as brown indigenous people, uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not that easy <laughs> to hide especially when everyone knows your history. You come from isolated native family groups that have been on the same land since pre-contact. Uh, you know, most of the communities know exactly who the indigenous families are here. So, um, you know, Virginia, we had a thing going on here with Walter Ashby Plecker um, with the reclassification of uh, native people racially. I guess he figured he couldn't get rid of native people um, through genocide, we just wipe them out on paper. And that's how uh, he started um, uh, in Virginia um, with, uh, he was in charge of vital statistics. So he was in charge of the records for the uh, state, of, uh, state of Virginia. And you know, he came up with that there were no native people here and they're only white by law and black by law. And the administrators here were given prime directives to not record native people as indigenous people. But many family groups here of native people fought against that. And we ensure to keep our heritage and our classifications on paper that will tie us back to our ancestors. So we've had a number of families that sued the state and actually were victorious in suing the state. You have the um, Collins family down in North Carolina who sued the state uh, against um, themselves being reclassified as white or Negro. Um, and they actually won the suit, um, but I think initially the suit pretty much said, well, we don't know you to be Negro, so we're just gonna deem that you be white and that you enjoy all the freedoms of white people, and which is pretty incredible. But within a generation or so, they all became reclassified as native people again anyway so um, for whatever reason um, because that's what they always identified as um, so you have many instances here where uh, native people here on the coast eastern eastern coast place of places of first contact that we've had to deal with the system and the reclassification racially to uh, separate us from ancestry and, and land because of course there were laws put into place that you know for for what it's worth native people had some type of protection within the law here against um, the taking of land even though it was taken anyway um, but that's kind of how uh, the indigenous people here kept their identity and still have to fight to maintain who we are in our ancestry um, to present date, 2018, uh, it, it still happens.
Now, we're talking about a time of severe segregation, severe prejudice, but to be classified as white in that time is, we're talking a huge um, action because at that time, blacks and Indians weren't allowed to be served alcohol legally or cocaine or pretty much any prescription drug for health reasons or anything. So to be classified as that, oh my goodness, opened up a whole plethora. Yeah, well, even with the native um, classification, or IND on records here in the state of Virginia, um, you know, uh, native people were still afforded rights to have weapons and, and uh, many other things that, you know, um, um, so-called Negroes were not allowed. Um, um, so they still even enjoyed some of the so-called privileges of white people. So um, you see many of my ancestors that had, uh, as part of their properties, a lot of things listed that uh, at that time even some white, most whites did not even have. And you had mentioned about moving to a Husky, North Carolina, more for across the river for protection, maybe, or? Yes, many of us receded inland um, from a lot of our uh, territories because of encroachment. And um, the Maharan, uh, the Maharan and Nottaway, uh, and the Tuscarora um, pretty much uh, got tired of encroachment. So a lot of us receded further inland and all the way to the uh, border of North Carolina, uh, Mahoskey, North Carolina, in which um, the Maharan Reservation was there, uh, right by Parker's Ferry, was the first uh, Maharan Reservation that the state so-called allowed us to have on our own properties. Um, even with the Nottaway, they receded further inland from the James River to um, uh, Southampton, um, in which again uh, we replaced on our own property the Nottaway Indian Reservation in Southampton County, in which we were forbade to leave. Uh, but of course, as decent Indian people, uh, we never followed any of that whatsoever. And so uh, the reservation ended up being sold and to our trustees who end up with all of our properties. For your own good. For our own good. And uh, we just occupied all of the surrounding areas, so we really never left. Well, thank you very much. I enjoy your stories. More film at 11.